this is Jim Delapine, and I'm going to show you an alternate method of creating an animated GIF in Photoshop, and I'm also going to be incorporating Adobe Illustrator. So my goal is to have this butterfly's wings flapping, okay, with the rest of the background in place, a static image. And uh, what I did was I combined an Illustrator document with Photoshop and then animated it from there. So let's begin with showing you how I started out in Illustrator. So what I simply did was downloaded an image that I got from Google. This is the image here that I created a template out of. I won't get into too many details about this. I really want to basically show you the process of how to bring a file and prepare it in Illustrator for importing it into Photoshop in order to animate it. Okay, so what I did was I traced over the right wing and then I simply mirrored that and copy that to the left side and I have the body as a separate layer. What I then did was I duplicated each layer and created this end result. Okay, so I have everything on one layer and then on layer two I simply scaled and modified each of the wings and so what I have here is a sequence of a butterfly's wings flapping. Okay, so our goal is to bring this into Photoshop and animate the sequence of layers here so that you get the entire full cycle of one single wing flap. So the first thing I'm going to do is select everything in this document here. I want to scale this up and what I've done beforehand is set this document up so that it's 640 pixels wide by 480 pixels high. So I want to maximize the scaling of this butterfly. So I'm going to select everything in this document and I'm going to scale the butterfly up and maximize her so that she fits into this document here and visually center it. All right, so what I then did was I went to file export and then what I'm going to do is since I want to retain all the layers and I want this to come in with a transparent background I'm going to select from the drop down menu PSD for a Photoshop document and I'll simply call this butterfly so this is a PSD document and I'm saving that I'm now in this export options window going to select 72 pixels per inch this is going to be for the web okay so you do have other options here so I want to select 72 pixels per inch and I'll hit OK alright so we're now ready to go into Photoshop and do the following I'm going to open up that file and when opened this is our end result let's bring up the layers palette Okay, so what you see is what I had mentioned, that we have a transparent background, and each of the Illustrator layers comes in in a nice little package folder. So what we have here is a number of folders, each of these folders representing a layer in Illustrator. So if I hide everything, you'll see that one layer, and then the next layer, etc. So let's show all the layers here, and now work with creating our document size. Now this document was brought into Photoshop and it brings in all of the, the solid pixels. So it does not set you up for the actual document size for your GIF. So we're going to go to image, canvas size. All right. And now I'm going to select pixels for my units and type in my intended goal of 640 pixels wide by 480 pixels high and hit OK. Okay, so now we have a document that is the end result size that we'd like and we've maximized our use of the butterfly in the document. Now, I do have other images here that I have uh, brought into the end result document here, which is the background tulip field. So I have this document here of the tulip field in this image here that I retrieved from Google. So I'm going to copy this, paste this into our document here. Okay, it's a little too big um, because the resolution was quite large. So let me just hit Control T to put my bounding box around 
the image. And now I'm simply going to scale this in a little bit here to match my document size. Okay. I'll hit enter to apply my transformation and we'll continue from here. I'm now going to drag this down to the bottom of the stacking order and then work with some text. Okay, so we're all set up and let's just work with what we see here. So we're now going to go through the process of animating this, change the stacking order so that the word graphics is below all the, the butterfly and above the background. Okay. All right, so what I'm first going to do is work with the timeline. So if I go to window timeline, and I'm going to start out with creating a frame animation. So you have the option for video and frame. So I'm going to click on the frame button here to create the first frame. We now have our first frame. And notice that all of these layers for the butterfly with the folders in here are hidden with the exception of the first one. Okay, so I'm now going to duplicate that frame by clicking on this icon right next to the trash can. So I'm going to click that. And now I'm going to hide my first layer and show my second layer. And I'm going to continue on. Duplicate that layer. Hide layer two, show layer three. Duplicate that. Hide three, show four, etc. So it's a simple mass production process of hiding and showing layers after the frames are duplicated. So our goal is to just animate the sequence of the butterfly's wing flapping. Okay, so here we have it. All right, so let me drag my timeline out of the viewing area and click the play button. And that's what we have. By default, it will flap its wings one time. You can now go in, you have the option of selecting forever. So that now when you click the play button, you have a looping of the butterfly's wings flapping. So let's talk about other options here. I could select the last frame and note that we have a certain speed here. All right, this butterfly is flapping at a certain speed. There is no hesitation in between each one of these frames. Okay, notice zero seconds. So we can change that. I'm going to actually click on the first frame and shift click the last frame to select all of them so that I can change the timing all at once. So if you click on this drop down menu, I'm going to select 0.1 seconds. And now when I click play, the butterfly, each frame will hesitate for one tenth of a second. So that's kind of graceful. I like that. Now I'll take it a step further and have the butterfly at this point hesitate a little longer. So I'm going to select from the drop down menu 0.2 seconds. So now when we click play, it's hesitating for just another tenth of a second. All right, to exaggerate that a little further, I'll stop it at a half of a second for a half of a second. All right, so we'll leave that as is. I like that. Okay, so now here's what we do. Let me just stop the animation. And I'm now going to go through the process of now creating the animated GIF. So it's a matter of simply saving it correctly. So I'm going to go to File, Save for Web. And in the document window that comes up, you're going to select GIF from the drop down menu here. I'm going to maximize my amount of colors, retain transparency. Um, this states the actual size down here. And you can see that the end result size will be 306K. So it's around a, uh, a little more than a, well, a little less than a third of a meg. So I'm now going to hit save and select where I'm going to save it to. So I'll call this butterfly and I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'll hit save. Our job is complete and now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the desktop and open up my document here for the butterfly. And it will launch into a browser window. And there you have what your animated GIF will look like in a browser. 
So I hope this was of value to you, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.